Hello everyone and welcome back to today's tutorial where I'll be showing you guys how I drew these eyes, this nose and the mouth using graphite and charcoal. So if you want a slower non sped up version of this tutorial I've got a 4 hour real time version of this over on my Patreon account along with narration whilst I was actually drawing this. So I'll be telling you every part of the process as I'm actually drawing it and also all the materials I use at every part of the drawing. So from now on I'll be putting the in-depth real-time versions of the tutorials that I'm doing on YouTube over onto my Patreon account. So if you're interested in getting exclusive drawing tutorials then check out patreon.com slash Partridge and I'll also leave a link to that at the top of the description box as well. So anyway let's get on with the tutorial. So the materials that I'm using for today's tutorial are the two graphite pencils by Derwent in the grades F and 4B. I'm using the General's Charcoal pencils in the grades Extra Hard, HB and 4B. For blending I'm using a tortillion, some cotton buds and just some tissue. And for erasing and pulling up highlights I'm using a kneaded eraser and just a stick eraser that I'll cut the edge off to create more of a harsh point. So starting off with the eyes and the first thing I always like to do is block in the darkest areas. So this will be the top eyelid, the pupils and the edge of the iris as well. And to do this I'm starting off by using the HB charcoal pencil. I love using charcoal because it doesn't produce any shine and it helps get your drawings really really dark. I'm also blocking in that crease and the eyebrow as well because they're dark areas as well. When you're drawing the eyebrow, try to use lines rather than just blocking it in in one block area. Just try and feather it in with some line strokes going in the direction that the eyebrow hairs would usually go in. So to shade the iris, I just use the graphite pencils and I use the lighter shades. And to blend it and soften the edge between where I put that charcoal and where I put the graphite, I'm using a tortillion. The tortillion is really good at blending areas together and especially for detailed areas. So the white of the eye isn't white so it only needs really light shading but it needs the graphite pencil and I'm just using the grade F for this one. And to blend it out I'm using the cotton bud and the tortillion. Onto the upper eyelid and to do that I just laid down some of the graphite pencil and some of the charcoal for the darker crease and again I'm blending that out with the tortillion and the cotton bud as well. I'm also using the cotton bud to add some value to the bottom eyelid as well but it isn't as dark as the top crease. When you're using the cotton bud it picks up a lot of that charcoal so it's really good to keep that um, cotton bud even if it's a bit dirty because you can use that to block in values on other areas. So now I'm using the kneaded eraser and I'm using this to just lift up some areas where it got a bit too dark and I'm also creating the waterline. And now I'm using the stick eraser to pull out some of the harsher highlights in the iris. It's really important when you're doing realistic drawing to have a really good contrast between your drawings. So make sure that you have some really bright highlights and some really dark shadows as well. So now moving on to the eyelashes and this is a really crucial part of an eye. So I'm using the extra hard charcoal pencil to block in some of the finer ones. So the bottom lash the bottom lashes tended to be a lot lighter than the upper lashes so I used the extra hard for that one and then I used the HB charcoal pencil to do the upper eyelashes. It's important to go in curved directions rather than doing them straight and follow the direction that the eyelashes are going in in your reference photo rather than just drawing them all straight and one length. I'm using the tortillion now to soften out the eyelashes with the skin around it. And I'll go back in with the charcoal pencil to darken up the roots of the eyelashes as well. So I just added some more individual hairs on the eyebrow because there's a lot of stray hairs in the reference photo and that will help it look more natural rather than just having a uniformed line and shape for the eyebrows. Now I'm just adding in dis um, details and crisping up the edges and now I'm doing the exact same thing with eye number two. So again I'm using that HB pencil to block in the eyebrows and the darkest areas. 
it releases a lot of powder which is really good um, and you can use it to blend into other areas later or you can just blow it away if you don't want to use that powder but I like to use it on the cotton bud to blend in where you need value on the skin around it like I'm doing now with the eyebrows I just use that extra powder from the eyebrows to give some area to the skin around the eye Now I'm just darkening up the creases and those darkest areas, add in some shadow to the bottom eyelid, well to the bottom under the eye, and now I'm just using a kneaded razor to pull up some highlights. Again I'm focusing on the eyelashes now and I'm focusing on the direction that they're going in. I'm making sure that I'm curving them and I'm also making sure that I alter the length and change the length up to give a bit of variety and then I'm going and just doing the same with the bottom lashes. The bottom eyelashes tend to be a bit sparser and less thick than the top eyelashes, so make sure you bear that in mind. With a female's eyes, you can get away with doing the eyelashes a bit more thick, a bit darker, and a bit more bold, but if you're doing a child's eyes or say a male's eyes, they might be a bit softer, so you might not be able to do them as dark. Otherwise, it might just look like they've got a lot of makeup on. So again, I like to use that kneaded eraser not only to pull up highlights, but to lighten certain areas that got a bit too dark. So this helps add a bit more control because now you have a way that you can fix any mistakes. So that's it for the eyes and now I'm moving on to the nose. And again, I like to tend to block in the darkest areas first. So with the nose, the darkest areas tend to be the nostrils and the underneath area of the nose. So also around the sides of the nose as well. So I'm just using that same HB charcoal pencil to block in all of those darkest areas. Now I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna work on the shadows of the nose. So I'm gonna go down the side of the nose with the F pencil to start with. And I'm just using that to build up the shadows. I'm using very light pressure and it doesn't matter if it looks grainy because tissue really, really does an amazing job at blending out all of the little pencil strokes so it creates really smooth shading, as you can see now. So now that I've done that, I'm going in with the 4B graphite pencil instead and I'm using that to intensify some of the shadows and really start to build up the structure of the nose. And again, I blended that out with the tissue once more. Again, I'm just building up those layers. I like to keep building it up in layers and build up the intensity of the shadows rather than doing it all in one layer because this helps me give more control to the drawing so that I know that I'm not going dark straight away so I can easily um, figure out whether I'm making any mistakes along the way. The more layers I build up, I go from using the tissue to using the cotton bud to blend because with the tissue, it's really good to blend large areas, but when you wanna blend out details and smaller areas, it's better to use the cotton bud or for even smaller areas, it's great to use the tortillion as well. So a tip for you guys is when you're using the tortillion, if you've already got some of the charcoal or graphite on it, then you can use that to add shadows as well. So now I tried to use a paintbrush to add some of the value and a paintbrush is a really good way to add some charcoal powder as well. But if you don't have a paintbrush then those other methods work just as well. It just depends on your preference and what you like doing. So again, I'm still building up those layers. I'm using the 4B pencil and I'm hardly using any pressure because you really don't need to. The more pressure you add, the harder it will be to blend out to get no pencil strokes showing. So when you're using really light pressure, it means that when you blend it out, you're not gonna have any of the pencil strokes showing through. So make sure you just use light pressure and build it up very, very slowly. So now I'm going on to building up the highlights and the highlights on the nose tend to be right in the center of the nose. So I'm just using a kneaded eraser first to lighten up the area and then I will go in and add more of the intense highlights um, using the stick eraser. But if you don't have the stick eraser then you can just keep using the kneaded eraser and just keep using it on one area to lift more and more of the graphite or charcoal to get more of an intense highlight. 
So now I'm going in with that stick eraser and I'm just using that to intensify the highlight. And I like to blend over the top of it to soften out the edge of the, and um, where the highlight is and where the shadow is to kind of soften that out and then just keep building up those highlights on top of it. So a lot of you might have a different technique that works with you. I kind of like to go around it the longer way. I like to build up layers, do it very slowly, come back and adjust things and smooth things out and re-erase um, bits here and there and darken up parts here and there as well rather than doing it all in one go. But if you found a different way that helps you and that you think you get really good results with, then go ahead. This isn't the only correct way to draw. This is just the way I've like to do it. So again I'm using that charcoal to add more shadows to the nostrils and the side of the nose. When you blend out with something like a cotton bud or tissue it tends to lighten up the area a lot so make sure that you go in and intensify the shadows if you need to because contrast between your shadows and your highlights is what is what is going to make your drawing look really really realistic. So I'm just touching up and adding little details, checking it with the reference photo and tweaking it to make sure that it's as close to the reference photo as we can get. And now once I've done that, I'm going to add in the little freckles on the side of her nose. And to do that, I use the 4B pencil to block them in. And as you can see, they look quite harsh. So I'm going to go over them with the cotton bud and also the tissue. And as you can see, it just blends them into the skin and makes them a bit more subtle. And then I go back in with that 4B pencil and just dot it in certain places on that freckle to darken up certain parts. Okay, so that's it for the nose and now moving on to the mouth. And the first thing that I'm doing is I'm using that F-ray pencil to block in some of the shading for the skin around the mouth. And to do this, I'm using very light pressure and I'm also just using the side of the pencil rather than the tip of the pencil because this helps make sure that you're not applying too much pressure and it just gives a really nice, soft, even shading. I blended that out with the tissue and now I'm going to go and start working on the mouth. So again, I'm starting off by blocking in the darkest part of the mouth, which is the center line. And to do that, I used the HB charcoal pencil. And now I'm going in with the 4B graphite pencil and I'm using that to block in the upper and lower lip. I'm looking at the reference photo to see where the shadows are on the lip because it's really important that you get the shadows in the correct place to make it look three dimensional and to make them look full and plump. So then I just used the cotton bud and also the tissue to blend that out. And again, I'm going in and darkening up that center line of the mouth because like I said, when you use tissue or a cotton bud to blend, it really uh, lightens up that charcoal because it's blending it and moving it around to different areas. So all I'm doing is looking at the reference photo, looking at where those darkest areas are and using the tortillion in this case to add some shade into those darkest areas. So now I'm going in with that HB charcoal pencil and I started to add in the creases. As you can see, her lips have got a lot of creases in them and they're quite dark. So I just started to block in where those creases are. When you're drawing creases in the lips, make sure that you look again at the direction. You need to make sure that they're curving around with the lip rather than going straight. Otherwise, it will look flat. So now I'm using that kneaded eraser to work on the cupid's bow. As you can see, just above her top lip, it's very highlighted and you've got just a nice strip of highlighted area as well as at the side of her lips as well. So I'm making sure that I'm looking at where the highlights are and I'm replicating them in my drawing. So now I'm going in on the bottom lip and I'm going in to do all of the main highlights. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm just blocking in the general area which is highlighted and that is at the middle of the bottom lip. So I'm just going in and I'm removing the graphite from that area and I'll go and soften it out with the tissue to make sure it's not just a harsh transition. I just want to generally see at the moment where the highlights are and where the shadows need to be. Now I'm going in with the stick eraser for more of an intense highlight and I'm using that to add in some of the creases and again I'm following the direction that the mouth is curving in. 
So now I'm going in with the tortillion and I'm just adding in some more shading. I'm using that 4B pencil to neaten up the shape of the mouth and the lips to make sure that it's identical to the reference photo because it's really easy to alter the shape of the mouth a little bit and it will look completely different to the reference photo. So I'm just building up the shadows and then I'll go in again and I'll end by doing the final highlights again. So as you can see under the center line of her mouth she's got a lot of shadow there as well. So that is going so making sure you get the shadows in the right place is really what is going to make your drawings look realistic. And like I said now I'm just putting in those final highlights and the final touch-ups with the highlights. I like to do a final highlight check once I've finished it because as you add more shadows you can get more pencil onto those highlights so I always just finally pull out the main highlights right at the end of the drawing as well. So I will leave links in the description to where you can get all of the materials and the materials that I'm using if you want to check them out. And at the moment I'm just using that 4B pencil to add in some of the main markings for the creases. But that's basically it for today's tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Remember to go and check out my Patreon account if you want to see even more in-depth tutorials with more tips and tricks and all that sort of stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'd love to know any other suggestions for tutorials you want to see. And I will see you soon. Bye!